Let's talk a little bit about your business plan and potentially this should have been the first topic we touched on because goal setting is just one item in your business plan. Your business plan may include all the activities, may include your goals, may include your ratios of close to how many people you spoke to. So there are all kinds of numbers that can be established in your business plan. Once again, I have a workbook for business plan. If you have an interest, email me and uh, I may attach this as a PDF to this uh, chapter that would allow you to see this business plan. Um, basically, it's a form that allows you to follow and what you do is you actually put some thought and sit down and create this business plan that's going to talk about your money goals, that's going to talk about your contact goals, that's going to talk about you know all of the number of listings that you'd rather have versus the number of uh, buyers that you may use. So your business plan is going to be something that you create that will help you establish all of this other stuff that we just talked about. One of the things that we've touched on just briefly, we can touch on it again, is this CRM or this contact database that you will be using because I'm telling you, second to lead generation is the lead follow-up. And if you're failing to follow up your database of names, then you have wasted your time in theirs and really are not gonna be successful. So you need to create this contact database. You can do something as simple as an Excel spreadsheet, put somebody's name, and at a minimum, I would think you would need their name, their email, and their phone number. With those three items, you can pretty much create and establish a very solid database of contacts. And you can do that in something as simple as Excel. You know, one column with names, one column with phone numbers, one column with emails. And then anytime you want to contact them, you just copy all the emails and put it in your Outlook and write one email and send it all to them. Now, if you're going to do that, let me give you a little hint. If you're going to contact multiple people on one email, you should make sure you put all of the contacts in the BCC section of your email. That stands for blind contact, all right? That means no one else sees your list of who you sent it to. Several reasons. One, you don't want to be given Bob, Bill's email address. You may have some privacy issues that you've said, hey, I won't give your emails out. And two is, you also don't want that person to think, even though it is, a canned email to everybody. Okay, now if you've got four or five names and you're just starting out, you might want to send a one email. I'll send one to Bob, here it is. Send one to Bill, here it is. Send one to Tom, here it is. Um, you get to the point where you start getting 30, 40, 50,000 names on your email, 30, 40, 50, or 1,000, not 30,000. If you had 30,000 names, you're rocking, dude. <laughs> Once you start getting a large number, that may be too convoluted. So you're going to go to this whole system of copying their emails, putting it in the blind contact and send one email to all of them. I'm going to tell you quickly what's going to happen is you're going to start getting a bunch of names and you're going to have to start segmenting your email. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is let's go over here didn't clear that from the last one. You, you may have five names on your database, all right? However, you've already emailed this guy once and you sent him some email that said, hi, I'm Raymond, I'm in the business, let me help you out and here's something I can give you of value. Now, when you go, you add these two people on and then you add these guys later. Now, if you're sending this guy the hello email, you may not want to send the hello email to this guy because you've already sent him a hello email. So this guy gets a different email than those two people get, than that person gets. And now you're into a very convoluted set of parameters. Now, the one exception to that would be as if you're sending the same email all the time. If you're doing that, you are setting yourself up for failure. All right? and there is a whole strategy 
on using this email campaign as to what this guy gets versus what this guy gets. You know, if you're sending all the emails out at the same time and the guy that just got on your list yesterday, he might be getting the hello email and the guy that got your list last week, we'll put him number one on your list, he may be getting some other email that says something else. So you cannot send those out together. So then you're like, oh, well, I got to send him this email and I got to send him this email and then this person gets this email. So you can see how quickly it becomes convoluted. This is where you're going to start putting in money to get one of those higher databases and or CRMs. And there are a blue zillion of them out there. Salesforce is obviously the most expensive. It can go up to tens and maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. Those are the companies like McDonald's that may be emailing, you know, millions of people. Probably not what you're going to need. Constant contact is a great one. And in constant contact, you can do this thing. It's called a drip campaign. You guys have all been victims of a drip campaign. This is where you get one email on day one and then one on day three and maybe on seven and then on nine. And all of these say different items. Well, as you can see, this guy in this contact here, he may be getting this one and somebody else is getting this one. So you ha would have to create this campaign of emails and you can write a hello email. That's your day one. And day three might be, hey, I'm still here, email. And day three is, haven't heard from you in a while. And this one is, uh, this is my last email. I don't want to bother you. You know, yada, yada, yada. So you create these so somebody goes through this list and on day one they get this one, on day three they get this one, on day seven they get this one, on day nine they would get that one and somebody else is getting this one while well, somebody else is getting that one. So it becomes very convoluted. And when you get into that realm, you are now looking at some sort of contact database that you would have to create. And that's obviously going to have a cost. Therefore, you need to budget that as part of your fee. This budget may be outside of your, uh, lead gen fee it could be part of your lead gen fee you know you've got direct mails you're going to print and you're going to do social media and radio and then once you collect all those names through lead gen you're going to email them on a constant basis so you may have a lead gen budget and you may have a budget for software so that's part of all of this stuff that's going to be created inside of your business plan which like I said, we probably should have spoke about first on how to establish that. So keep that in mind so that when you, as you're getting paid, you can funnel some of that money somewhere else because, Hey, I made three grand, but there's a percentage going to go to my lead gen. There's a percentage going to the taxes there. And I may only, you know, walk away with this. This is going to be my pay and I'm going to use this other money to generate more deals. That's how the process works. All of that would be construed inside of your business plan. And once that business plan happens, you need to start following the numbers. Now, what I see, routinely see a lot is somebody that fails to do a lot of deals because of their activity is not there. And what they end up doing is scavenging. Well, I don't have any money for a, uh, but, uh, marketing this month because I got to pay my house payment. So there goes all my money. And now I'm left with nothing in the pipeline. So you can see how this issue can quickly escalate into a bad item. All right. So you want to make sure that you keep this and part of your budget because you don't want that to happen. Now, part of your emails could also be directed towards a specific issue. You may have a buyer system email and you may have a seller's system. If someone says, yes, we're thinking about selling our house, they may get a different set of emails than someone that says, I'm thinking about buying. 
in that buying email section, you may talk about the mortgage rates and contact your lender to get pre-qualified to make your offer really strong. Whereas the seller, you may be sending them some information about, you know, hey, 10 ways to sell your house cl quicker, declutter, mow the front lawn. So you could have a buyer system and a seller system. Now it's highly possible that someone ends up in both and there causes another issue. So you've got to think about this all in your business plan <clears throat> as part of your budget, uh, part of your contact database, which will tie in to your lead gen situation. All right, that's enough for this. Uh, and remember, this is mainly just going to be introduction. Every one of these that we've discussed, there are classes out there that you can spend hours on lead gen. You can spend hours on learning to write your business goals or your uh, business plan or any of that. So don't think that I am trying to give you the be all end all. I teach a class on lead gen, like I told you, that was six hours just on lead generation. And we go in depth on four or five different methods. Once again, I had 109 on my list in my six hour class, I only talk about four or five. So there are many, many hours that could be spent on just these introduction sections that you need to be aware of, most notably drip campaigns. And there's a whole psychology on how often do you send them an email? When, what intervals do you send them an email? How long do you send them uh, emails before you quit sending them emails? And everybody has an opinion on that. And you may figure out that I need to send emails on day one, two, three, four, and five, because I want to hit that window. Or it may be that you send them emails all the way for two years, unless they obviously unsubscribe. So keep that in mind. All right. There is a whole bunch more that we could talk about uh, at any given time. Until then, here's a quick overview. Uh, let's move on to the next item.